Good morning, my little nerds. I'm Dr. Shireen Idris, and welcome to Saturday Morning Pillow Talk Derm, where we are going to do today a full, comprehensive roundup of sunscreens, kicking summer off next weekend. And I see you. I see you. You're going to slide into my DMs with a really bad sunburn and ask me, how do I take care of this? I am here to help prevent that from happening. Before I jump in, like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. Number one rule with sunscreen is not is chemical better? Is physical better? Which one is safer? Which one is best for me? The best sunscreen for you is the one that you're actually going to use every single day, rain or shine. Because I'm a cosmetic dermatologist. I make my living from reversing the sun damage, from getting rid of the sunspots you don't like, from doing laser treatments. And I'm here to tell you, if you want to save yourself a lot of money and headache down the road, i.e. if you do not want to pay me down the road, start wearing sunscreen on the regular today because this is what's going to help protect your skin and protect your bum down the road. And not to mention the C word. Skin cancer has been directly correlated with sun exposure and believe it or not, it's not even those who get consistently burned on the regular. It's even the ones who have these sporadic, irregular, really bad burns every summer that are probably even at highest risk. So let's jump in best sunscreens for dry skin starting with my baby i love this one the beauty of joshan this is a very silky slippy sunscreen that retails for believe it or not 10 bucks it is a hybrid of a physical and a chemical to this day i'm not sure how stylevana gets them to get to the us but i am going to take advantage of that loophole because this korean sunscreen is unbelievable she's fragrance free she's 30 percent rice extract and she's lightweight non-greasy Absolutely love it. Um, easy to use every single day and easy to layer on top of moisturizer. The other one that I really do like is Perito's Daily Go-To Sunscreen SPF 50. It's also a hybrid, fragrance-free. This one has a much more sheer finish, as you can tell over here. And I'm gonna just rub that in over here and you guys can see. It's really sheer, it's really easy to layer over a moisturizer. Quick side note, as you're going from the winter months, which are usually dry with the heaters on, to the summer months, which are usually hotter and more humid, you can tailor your moisturizer. If you're someone who's very dry, layering these two sunscreens on top of a moisturizer is great, and that's why you want to keep a moisturizer. But if you're somebody who's very oily, right, you can maybe even skip the moisturizer altogether, and the sunscreen that I would recommend for oily skin is the La Roche-Posay Double Repair Face Moisturizer. Counterintuitive, because I actually really love this one for the winter time, especially for people with dry skin who are also moisturizing, because it's slightly heavier than these ones. But if you have oily skin, you can skip the moisturizer altogether and just use this in the summer, and you're gonna be golden. The Double Repair Face Moisturizer is Broad Spectrum SPF 30. It retails for 20 bucks. It is a chemical sunscreen. It's also relatively deceiving in that it appears lightweight, but it is loaded with ceramides to help restore your skin barrier and give you that extra sheen that you need. If you're oily, again, you can skip your morning moisturizer. You do not need to moisturize in the summertime when it's hot and humid. And this is all you need to help replenish your barrier and to protect your skin in the process. So she is kind of a chameleon. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, chameleon. If YouTube um, blocks me for singing that song, it's the end of everyone because that's the worst rendition of that song. But chameleon for oily to dry skin in the winter and dry skin to oily skin in the summer. Moving on to our sensitive souls out there. We have three in the lineup. Dr. Jart is the first one with every Sunday mineral sunscreen at SPF 50. This one is for $50. It is a weightless water resistant SPF but water resistant means nothing to me because even though it can last longer through water usage and water sports, I still reapply this very regularly if I am at the beach or at the pool. Don't be so misled with the false sense of security that it's water resistant and it's gonna last throughout the day. It will not and you do need to constantly reapply, especially if you jump into the pool and it's less than two hours apart. SkinCeuticals is a tried and true. You have to shake this baby up. Their physical fusion UV defense is their broad spectrum SPF at $36. It is titanium and zinc. I actually take their tinted version 
I like it more than their white one because I do feel like it leaves less of a cast behind. It's not great for every skin tone, unfortunately, but that's the problem with zinc and titanium. It's very hard to create a physical blocker that I'm like pale as anything and it gives me a little bit of a color. And last, Vanna Cream. This brand is a great brand if you have sensitive skin. Now, what you're gonna notice is that they are very proud of their free of dyes, fragrance, masking fragrance, lanolin, parabens, formaldehyde releasers. But this doesn't come from a place of fear mongering. People who have sensitive skin tend to get very sensitive to certain ingredients, and these are usually the biggest culprits. And that's why these products are free of those ingredients. It doesn't mean that it's a clean brand. It doesn't mean that they're trying to like, hopefully not, play into the fear mongering. And again, I have no shares. I'm not sponsored by them. But this is a great brand if you are sensitive. It is a combination of zinc. It's actually just zinc oxide, and it has ceramides as well. It is relatively lightweight and not necessarily the best when it comes to a cast or in terms of elegance but again if you are very sensitive this is a very safe option and safe next on anti-aging anti-aging isdin isdin is a spanish brand this is their uh, erythotona actinica daily spf 50 that retails for 60 bucks she also needs to be shaken not stirred and it is a zinc oxide just to show you guys it's also very watery, kind of like the SkinCeuticals, but the reason why this one is better for anti-aging purposes is because it is formulated with a proprietary patented DNA repairosomes, which help to prove repair existing sun damage. So if you have a lot of precancerous lesions, also known as actinic keratosis, or a lot of sun damage on your face, this is not only protecting but is being proactive in helping you fix your skin in the process so love is done for that now we're going to switch gears into skin tones now unfortunately for skin tones when it comes to sunscreens and comes to mineral sunscreens so things with zinc and titanium it is very hard to find one that doesn't leave a cast if you are somebody who is darker and you're not sensitive i will tell you Go get the Beauty of Joshan. This is a great, easy one. I think it will definitely melt into your skin. It is very, very elegant and very, very easy. Or even the La Roche-Posay Double Repair. These are great sunscreens that are chemical sunscreens that will melt into your skin without leaving a cast. But if you are somebody who is a darker skin tone and you have sensitive skin, the ones that I have seen that have been the best from my patients, Peter Thomas Roth has a mineral sunscreen. Patients have told me that they've had very good outcomes with this particular mineral sunscreen in darker skin types. I will also say that the Tatcha, their silk sunscreen broad spectrum SPF 50 is a zinc oxide sunscreen. It is broad spectrum. It is a mineral sunscreen that works great in all skin tones per my patients, especially my Indian patients. I will say it's very liquidy. It does blend in rather seamlessly, and they've done a really nice job in the formulations. I hate the packaging. I hate how thin it is. I hate it doesn't stand, it's flimsy, but, and for 60 bucks, it could have been better in terms of like not being so cheap and peeling off. That's my own thing with it, and it has, a, it has HA. So if you're trying to limit how much hyaluronic acid you're using in your skincare routine, this one has it in it. It doesn't bother me so much because it's only in one product if you end up using it, but you don't need an HA serum. You definitely do not need an HA serum going into summer. Please, you don't. Live Tinted is another brand at SPF 30 and $32. It is a zinc oxide. I tried this one on Tiffany who works with me and she's Guyanese. And I will say that she thought it was really nice, but it does leave a slightly orange hue to the skin. So if you're very dark, I would probably not go for this one, go for the Tatcha or go for the Peter Thomas Roth. Otherwise, this one has some really nice reviews online. Now, for under makeup, for all the makeup wearers out there, let's talk about what kind of sunscreen to use underneath your makeup. You can absolutely use the sunscreens that we've talked about, no problem at all. But if you're looking for a little je ne sais quoi, what I sometimes like to do is take Supergoop's glow screen and lightly pat it to the highlights and high bones, high cheekbones of my face. It is $36, it's a chemical sunscreen. I don't use too much of it because I would have already used the other sunscreen and because it is a chemical sunscreen, my eyes are sensitive. If I get it in my eyes, it's like watershed terrible for everyone. I had it happen to me one time while driving and I had to pull over because I couldn't see. So that was a scary moment. So I've learned to just kind of use it 
you know what, on the high points of my face to give my skin that extra glowy sheen because it's pretty. But I do have sunscreen underneath. So that's how I use the Super Goop Glow Screen. Other people can use it all over their face and I'm envious, but I can't because of the sensitivity of my eyes. If you're looking for a sunscreen that can kind of do two things, act like a makeup while still giving you the protection that you need, the only caveat that I have if you're gonna do this is use the right amount. I will say that that is what I do, especially in the winter time when I am really not outside and I go from the apartment to the office before the sun is out and I go home once the sun is down. But I love Laura Mercier. This one has been a godsend to me. It is their tinted moisturizer, but they recently came out with an illuminating one, which I much prefer to the tinted moisturizer, and it gives you that little glow. Obviously, I have a little bit more of a glow because of the glow screen, but it's just enough where you don't feel like it's overpowering. I use two full finger lengths, one on each face, and then I just kind of dab it all into my face very evenly. It is a chemical sunscreen. It retails for 48 bucks. I do not wear foundation when when I wear this I just literally put it that's what I have on my face right now and it ha comes in 20 shades it is no makeup makeup really nice for every day the other one that I've never tried and very transparently just bought because of all of you guys is Kosas I love their little packaging I like that it's small it's slightly wider than Tatcha's so it does hold better it is a nerd pick from last week this one retails for 40 bucks it's the dream beam sunscreen it's a mineral sunscreen with 21% nano non nano zinc oxide peptide ceramides and HA as well I mean if you're gonna make a brand new sunscreen just can somebody not promote hyaluronic acid please but anyway it's a new sunscreen. I'm going to test it out right now for all of you guys. This is the actual consistency of it. It feels very soft and smooth. And when it goes on, I don't know how good this is going to be for darker skin types, but on my skin tone, it goes on relatively seamlessly. It has a little bit of a yellowish hue to it, but worth a try. It is one that all of you nerds have requested that I speak of. I will say it is definitely worth a try. I'm going to take it home this weekend and try using it. So now that we've covered all sunscreens from here to here, even though very honestly, I do go down to here every single day, it's time to move on to the body. The body can be tricky because people sometimes overlook this completely and only remember it when they go to the beach. I am guilty of that because very honestly, I don't wear body sunscreen every single day. I'm covered in sweaters and I'm hardly outside. But if you're running errands, if you're wearing tank tops, if you're wearing t-shirts and you are out and about, definitely make sure to cover your arms and go down to your tits because that is where a lot of the damage happens and it will get creepy over time. Super Goop has their play sunscreen. It is a chemical sunscreen. If you have sensitive eyes and you get this in your eyes, it will burn. So that is why I love it for my kids. I don't necessarily love it for me because my eye situation Situation. I love one by Color Science. I don't have it here. It is a mineral sunscreen for the body, which is relatively rare to find, but it is a really nice one and it comes in different shades as well. They also have a bronzed version. So if you're at the beach and you want to feel like a bronze statue, the Color Science bronzed body sunscreen is an interesting one to go for. The other one that people love and that I actually really do like as well is Copper Tone Glow, which is SPF 50. It is um, 15 to 20 bucks. It is also Tiffany's favorite sunscreen and it doubles as her body shimmer as well. So why not protect your skin and look good in the process? I'm all for it. This one is water resistant up to 80 minutes, but again, you're gonna have to reapply if you jump in the water. They also have, which is interesting, a spray. Don't use this for your face, but if you wanna reapply, sprays are a great way to reapply for the body. You're gonna need much more than you think. A good rule of thumb is if the floor is relatively slippery, you're probably good and you've applied enough, okay? But don't think that one little spritz is gonna give you all the cover that you need. In terms of scalp, sunscreens. A lot of people do not have the density of hair on their scalp and they need to protect their scalps. You can wear a hat, of course, but if you're somebody who doesn't like to wear hats, SPF powders are a great way to go. Uh, Super Goop, this is their resetting mineral powder, SPF 35. It is one that I do like also if I do not want to wash my hair. It acts like a dry shampoo to a certain extent. If you need to get some in your scalp, I would go for the Super Goop powder. There's also one by Sunbomb, which I do not have here, but when I tell you it transports me and takes me away to a tropical island, you will feel the same way too. 
Love, love, love the Sunbum Scalp and Hair Mist SPF 30. It is only $17 and the cheapest vacation you will ever take in your brain. Talking about reapplication, this is also a great option to reapply if you're out and about in the city. And in the summertime, it's also good to help blot any excess sheen that you get from being overly sweaty. It comes in four shades, translucent, light, medium, and deep, which might also work for hair tones as well. It is a 24% zinc oxide, retails for 30 bucks. I like how they come with this. So you can actually uncap it completely and you can just buy the powders and save the brush. Just make sure you clean your brush between uses because that can just become very unsanitary. In terms of body reapplication, we gently touched on the Copper Tone Glow Shimmer, but if you're looking for a mist that is also a mineral-based mist for your body, Elta MD has their UV AOX Mist, which I actually love because it is white. So you see exactly, and I will show you guys, where you are applying it. It's a little bit hard though with the cap if I'm being very transparent, but it's white. So you can totally see where you're actually applying it. So there's no mist areas, you're, there's no false sense of security. You can really truly see if you have a nice even coating all over your body and then it can get rubbed in. And so to my surprise, it rubs in relatively elegantly where there's not a crazy, crazy white cast left behind. So I love it. Side tip, never spray a spray sunscreen on your face. You don't wanna inhale it. So you wanna make sure that you spray it on your palms of your hands and then go to work. Now for kiddos, call me evil. I want them to look like ghosts. I don't care what skin tone they are. I wanna see the sunscreen on them to know that their skin is protected so that they can thank me later on in life. C'est pas très gentil, but I don't care. And you know what? They can speak to their therapist about it in 30 years. But Think Baby is as minerally unelegant as it gets. And this one makes you looking like a ghost. It's really hard to rub this one in. I'm not trying to sell this for any sort of elegant situation, but if you want your kids to have a really high bill with a therapist when they're older, but beautiful skin, Think Baby is the way to go, I think. Um, no pun intended. It's SPF 50, it is 20% zinc oxide, and it is great for little ones. If your baby's less than six months old, the American Academy of Pediatricians do not really recommend that kids under six months use sunscreen. I hope to God you're not putting a little baby underneath the sun anyway, and that you're protecting their skin with UPF clothing, hats, even sunglasses with UV filters to protect their very sensitive eyes because they're still little, small little babies. So anyway, that is that. That is the sunscreen roundup. I had my Kleenex ready today. I hope you guys learned something in this video and that this video is gonna be super helpful for you. All the products will be linked below and I will see you guys next Saturday.